Heraclitus of Ephesus, Greek, Heracleitos ho Ephesias translit. Heracleitos ho Ephesias, c. 535 c. 475 BCE was a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher, and a native of the city of Ephesus, then part of the Persian Empire. He was of distinguished parentage. Little is known about his early life and education, but he regarded himself as self-taught and a pioneer of wisdom. From the lonely life he led, and still more from the apparently riddled and allegedly paradoxical nature of his philosophy and his stress upon the heedless unconsciousness of humankind, he was called the obscure and the weeping philosopher. Heraclitus was famous for his insistence on ever-present change as being the fundamental essence of the universe, as stated in the famous saying, "No man ever steps in the same river twice." See Pantarai below. This is commonly considered to be one of the first digressions into the philosophical concept of becoming, and has been contrasted with Parmenides' statement that, "What is is," as one of the first digressions into the philosophical concept of being. As such, Parmenides and Heraclitus are commonly considered to be two of the founders of ontology. Scholars have generally believed that either Parmenides was responding to Heraclitus, or Heraclitus to Parmenides, though opinion on who was responding to whom changed over the course of the 20th century. Heraclitus' position was complemented by his stark commitment to a unity of opposites in the world, stating that, "...the path up and down are one and the same." Through these doctrines Heraclitus characterized all existing entities by pairs of contrary properties, whereby no entity may ever occupy a single state at a single time. This, along with his cryptic utterance that, "...all entities come to be in accordance with this logos," literally, "...word," "...reason," or "...account," has been the subject of numerous interpretations. Topic. Life The main source for the life of Heraclitus is Diogenes Laetius, although some have questioned the validity of his account as a tissue of Hellenistic anecdotes, most of them obviously fabricated on the basis of statements in the preserved fragments. Diogenes said that Heraclitus flourished in the 69th Olympiad, 504–501 BCE. All the rest of the evidence—the people Heraclitus is said to have known, or the people who were familiar with his work—confirms the Florut. His dates of birth and death are based on a lifespan of 60 years, the age at which Diogenes says he died, with the Florut in the middle. Heraclitus was born to an aristocratic family c. 540 BC in Ephesus, in the Persian Empire, in what is now called present-day Ephes, Turkey. His father was named either Blossom or Heracon. Diogenes says that he abdicated the kingship Basilea in favor of his brother and Strabo confirms that there was a ruling family in Ephesus descended from the Ionian founder, Androclus, which still kept the title and could sit in the chief seat at the games, as well as a few other privileges. How much power the king had is another question. Ephesus had been part of the Persian Empire since 547 and was ruled by a satrap, a more distant figure, as the great king allowed the Ionians considerable autonomy. Diogenes says that Heraclitus used to play knucklebones with the youths in the Temple of Artemis and when asked to start making laws he refused saying that the constitution politeia was ponera, which can mean either that it was fundamentally wrong or that he considered it toilsome. Two extant letters between Heraclitus and Darius I, quoted by Diogenes, are undoubtedly later forgeries. With regard to education, Diogenes says that Heraclitus was wondrous, Thaumasias, which, as Socrates explains in Plato's Theaetetus and Gorgias, is the beginning of philosophy from childhood. Diogenes relates that Socian said he was a hearer of Xenophanes, which contradicts Heraclitus' statement so says Diogenes that he had taught himself by questioning himself. Burnett states in any case that Xenophanes left Ionia before Heracleitos was born. Diogenes relates that as a boy Heraclitus had said he knew nothing, but later claimed to know everything. His statement that he heard no one, but questioned himself can be placed alongside his statement that, "...the things that can be seen, heard and learned are what I prize the most." Diogenes relates that Heraclitus had a poor opinion of human affairs. 
He believed that Hesiod and Pythagoras lacked understanding though learned and that Homer and Archilochus deserved to be beaten. Laws needed to be defended as though they were city walls. Timon of Phleas is said to have called him a mob reviler. Heraclitus hated the Athenians and his fellow Ephesians, wishing the latter wealth in punishment for their wicked ways. According to Diogenes Laetius, finally, he became a hater of his kind misanthrope and wandered the mountains making his diet of grass and herbs. Heraclitus' life as a philosopher was interrupted by dropsy. The physicians he consulted were unable to prescribe a cure. Diogenes lists various stories about Heraclitus' death. In two versions, Heraclitus was cured of the dropsy and died of another disease. In one account, however, the philosopher buried himself in a cowshed, expecting that the noxious damp humor would be drawn out of him by the warmth of the manure. While another says he treated himself with a liniment of cow manure and, after a day prone in the sun, died and was interred in the marketplace. According to Neves of Cyzicus, after smearing himself with dung, Heraclitus was devoured by dogs. He died after 478 BC from a hydropsy. Topic. Works Diogenes states that Heraclitus' work was a continuous treatise on nature, but was divided into three discourses, one on the universe, another on politics, and a third on theology. Theophrastus says in Diogenes less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 some parts of his work are half finished while other parts made a strange medley diogenes also tells us that heraclitus deposited his book as a dedication in the great temple of artemis the artemisium one of the largest temples of the 6th century bce and one of the seven wonders of the ancient world Ancient temples were regularly used for storing treasures, and were open to private individuals under exceptional circumstances. Furthermore, many subsequent philosophers in this period refer to the work. Says Khan, down to the time of Plutarch and Clement, if not later, the little book of Heraclitus was available in its original form to any reader who chose to seek it out. Diogenes says, the book acquired such fame that it produced partisans of his philosophy who were called Heraclitians. As with the other pre Socratics, his writings survive now only in fragments quoted by other authors. These are catalogued using the Diels Kranz numbering system. <laughs> <laughs> Ancient characterizations Topic: The Obscure. At some time in antiquity, he acquired this epithet, denoting that his major sayings were difficult to understand. According to Diogenes Laetius, Timon of Phleas called him the Riddler, Anictes Anictes, and explained that Heraclitus wrote his book rather unclearly, Asaphestron, so that only the capable should attempt it. By the time of Cicero he had become the dark Hoskotinos Hoskotinos because he had spoken nimus obscure too obscurely concerning nature and had done so deliberately in order to be misunderstood. The customary English translation of Hoskotinos follows the Latin the obscure. Topic <laughs> the weeping philosopher. Diogenes Laetius ascribes the theory that Heraclitus did not complete some of his works because of melancholia to Theophrastus. Later he was referred to as the «weeping philosopher», as opposed to Democritus, who is known as the «laughing philosopher». If Stobius writes correctly, Socian in the early 1st century CE was already combining the two in the imaginative duo of weeping and laughing philosophers. Among the wise, instead of anger, Heraclitus was overtaken by tears, Democritus by laughter. The view is expressed by the satirist Juvenal. The first of prayers, best known at all the temples, is mostly for riches. Seeing this, then do you not commend the one sage Democritus for laughing? 
and the master of the other school Heraclitus for his tears? The motif was also adopted by Lucian of Samosata in his Sale of Creeds, in which the duo is sold together as a complementary product in the satirical auction of philosophers. Subsequently, they were considered an indispensable feature of philosophic landscapes. Montaigne proposed two archetypical views of human affairs based on them, selecting Democritus for himself. The weeping philosopher may have been mentioned in William Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice. Donato Bramante painted a fresco, Democritus and Heraclitus, in Casa Panagarola in Milan. Topic: Philosophy. Topic: Logos. The idea that all things come to pass in accordance with this logos. And the logos is common is expressed in two famous but obscure fragments. This Logos holds always but humans always prove unable to understand it, both before hearing it and when they have first heard it. For though all things come to be in accordance with this Logos, humans are like the inexperienced when they experience such words and deeds as I set out, distinguishing each in accordance with its nature and saying how it is. But other people fail to notice what they do when awake, just as they forget what they do while asleep. DK 22B1 for this reason it is necessary to follow what is common. But although the Logos is common, most people live as if they had their own private understanding. DK 22b2. The meaning of Logos also is subject to interpretation. Word. Account. Principle. Plan. Formula. Measure. Proportion. Reckoning. Though Heraclitus quite deliberately plays on the various meanings of Logos. There is no compelling reason to suppose that he used it in a special technical sense, significantly different from the way it was used in ordinary Greek of his time, the later Stoics understood it as the account which governs everything, and Hippolytus, in the 3rd century CE, identified it as meaning the Christian word of God. Pantarai, everything flows. The phrase pantarai, pantarai, everything flows, either was spoken by Heraclitus or survived as a quotation of his. This famous aphorism used to characterize Heraclitus' thought comes from Simplicius, a Neoplatonist, and from Plato's Cratylus. The word rai, as in rheology, is the Greek word for to stream. And is etymologically related to Rhea according to Plato's Cratylus. The philosophy of Heraclitus is summed up in his cryptic utterance Potomisi toison autoisen imbanazen hetera kai hetera hydata epere potomisi toison autoisen imbanazen hetera kai hetera hydata epere. Ever newer waters flow on those who step into the same rivers. The quote from Heraclitus appears in Plato's Cratylus twice, in 401 Dias. Ta onta ienai te panta kai menin uden ta onta ienai te panta kai menin uden. All entities move and nothing remains still. And in 402 a. Panta chore kai uden menei. Kai. Dis estan autan potamon aukan embis. Panta chore kai uden menei kai dis estan autan potamon aukan embis. Everything changes and nothing remains still. And you cannot step twice into the same stream. Instead of flow, Plato uses chore to change place. Koros koros. The assertions of flow are coupled in many fragments with the enigmatic river image. Potomwa toys autoas imbanomen take hi alkambanomen imen take hi alkamen. We both step and do not step in the same rivers. We're and are not. Compare with the Latin adages omnia mutantur and tempora mutantur 8 CE and the Japanese tale Hojoki 1200 CE which contains the same image of the changing river and the central Buddhist doctrine of impermanence. However, the German classicist and philosopher Karl Martin Dietz interprets this fragment as an indication by Heraclitus for the world as a steady constant. You will not find anything in which the river remains constant. 
just the fact, that there is a particular river bed, that there is a source and a estuary etc. is something, that stays identical. And this is the concept of a river. Hodos anno kato – the way up and the way down In Hodos anno kato the structure anno kato is more accurately translated as a hyphenated word, the upward-downward path. They go on simultaneously and instantaneously and result in hidden harmony. A way is a series of transformations, the pyros tropi, turnings of fire, first into sea, then half of sea to earth and half to rarefied air. The transformation is a replacement of one element by another. The death of fire is the birth of air, and the death of air is the birth of water. This world, which is the same for all, no one of gods or men has made. But it always was and will be, an ever-living fire, with measures of it kindling, and measures going out. This latter phraseology is further elucidated, all things are an interchange for fire, and fire for all things, just like goods for gold and gold for goods. Heraclitus considered fire as the most fundamental element. He believed fire gave rise to the other elements and thus to all things. He regarded the soul as being a mixture of fire and water, with fire being the noble part of the soul, and water the ignoble part. A soul should therefore aim toward becoming more full of fire and less full of water, a dry soul was best. According to Heraclitus, worldly pleasures made the soul moist. And he considered mastering one's worldly desires to be a noble pursuit which purified the soul's fire. Norman Melchett interpreted Heraclitus as using fire, metaphorically, in lieu of logos, as the origin of all things. <laughs> Dyke Eris. Strife is justice. If objects are new from moment to moment so that one can never touch the same object twice, then each object must dissolve and be generated continually momentarily and an object is a harmony between a building up and a tearing down. Heraclitus calls the oppositional processes eris, eris strife, and hypothesizes that the apparently stable state, dyke dyke, or justice is a harmony of it, we must know that war polemos polemos is common to all and strife is justice, and that all things come into being through strife necessarily. As Diogenes explains, all things come into being by conflict of opposites, and the sum of things ta -ola ta -ola", the whole, flows like a stream. In the bow metaphor Heraclitus compares the resultant to a strung bow held in shape by an equilibrium of the string tension and spring action of the bow, there is a harmony in the bending back palantropos, palantropos, as in the case of the bow and the lyre. Hepastai to koino. Follow the common. People must. Follow the common. Hepastai toi koinoi hepastai to koino and not live having their own judgment phronesis. He distinguishes between human laws and divine law tu theu tu theu lit of God by God. Heraclitus does not mean the Judeo-Christian version of a single God as primum movens of all things, God as creator, but the divine as opposed to human, the immortal as opposed to the mortal, the cyclical as opposed to the transient. It is more accurate to speak of the divine and not of God. He removes the human sense of justice from his concept of God, i.e., humanity is not the image of God. To God all things are fair and good and just, but people hold some things wrong and some right. God's custom has wisdom but human custom does not, and yet both humans and God are childish inexperienced. Human opinions are children's toys. And Eternity is a child moving counters in a game, the kingly power is a child's. Wisdom is, to know the thought by which all things are steered through all things, which must not imply that people are or can be wise. Only Zeus is wise. To some degree then Heraclitus seems to be in the mystic's position of urging people to follow God's plan without much of an idea what that may be. In fact there is a note of despair. 
The fairest universe Callisto's Cosmos, Callisto's Cosmos is but a heap of rubbish Sama Sama lit. Sweepings. Piled up Ketchimenon Ketchumenon, i.e. Quote. Poured out. At random Ike Ike. Aimlessly. Topic. Ethos Anthropoi Damon. Man's character is his fate. This influential quote by Heraclitus, Ethos Anthropoi Damon, DK 22b119, has led to numerous interpretations. Whether in this context, Damon can indeed be translated to mean fate is disputed, however, it lends much sense to Heraclitus' observations and conclusions about human nature in general. While the translation with fate is generally accepted as in Kant's a man's character is his divinity. In some cases, it may also stand for the soul of the departed. Topic: Influence. Topic: Plato. To Heraclitus, a perceived object is a harmony between two fundamental units of change, a waxing and a waning. He typically uses the ordinary word, to become, gignisthai or ginisthai, present tense or aorist tense of the verb, with the root sense of, being born, which led to his being characterized as the philosopher of becoming rather than a being. He recognizes the fundamental changing of objects with the flow of time. Plato argues against Heraclitus as follows, how can that be a real thing which is never in the same state? For at the moment that the observer approaches, then they become other, so that you cannot get any further in knowing their nature or state, but if that which knows and that which is known exist ever, then I do not think they can resemble a process or flux. In Plato one experienced unit is a state, or object existing, which can be observed. The time parameter is set at «ever», that is, the state is to be presumed present between observations. Change is to be deduced by comparing observations and is thus presumed a function that happens to objects already in being, rather than something ontologically essential to them such that something that does not change cannot exist as in Heraclitus. In Plato, no matter how many of those experienced units you are able to tally, you cannot get through the mysterious gap between them to account for the change that must be occurring there. This limitation is considered a fundamental limitation of reality by Plato and in part underpins his differentiation between imperfect experience from more perfect forms. The fact that this is no limitation for Heraclitus motivates Plato's condemnation. Topic. Stoics Stoicism was a philosophical school which flourished between the 3rd century BC and about the 3rd century AD. It began among the Greeks and became the major philosophy of the Roman Empire before declining with the rise of Christianity in the 3rd century. Throughout their long tenure the Stoics believed that the major tenets of their philosophy derived from the thought of Heraclitus. According to Long, the importance of Heraclitus to later Stoics is evident most plainly in Marcus Aurelius. Explicit connections of the earliest Stoics to Heraclitus showing how they arrived at their interpretation are missing, but they can be inferred from the Stoic fragments, which Long concludes are modifications of Heraclitus. The Stoics were interested in Heraclitus' treatment of fire. In addition to seeing it as the most fundamental of the four elements and the one that is quantified and determines the quantity logos of the other three, he presents fire as the cosmos, which was not made by any of the gods or men, but was and is and ever shall be ever living fire. Fire is both a substance and a motivator of change, it is active in altering other things quantitatively and performing an activity Heraclitus describes as the judging and convicting of all things. It is the thunderbolt that steers the course of all things. There is no reason to interpret the judgment, which is actually to separate crinine crinine, as outside of the context of strife is justice. See subsection above. 
The earliest surviving Stoic work, the Hymn to Zeus of Cleanthus, though not explicitly referencing Heraclitus, adopts what appears to be the Heraclitian Logos modified. Zeus rules the universe with law nomos, wielding on its behalf the forked servant, the fire, or the ever-living lightning. So far nothing has been said that differs from the Zeus of Homer. But then, says Cleanthus, Zeus uses the fire to straighten out the common logos that travels about Foyton to frequent, mixing with the greater and lesser lights, heavenly bodies. This is Heraclitus Logos, but now it is confused with the common nomos, which Zeus uses to make the wrong parissa, left or odd, right, artier, right or even, and order cosmain the disordered acosma. The Stoic modification of Heraclitus' idea of the Logos was also influential on Jewish philosophers such as Philo of Alexandria, who connected it to wisdom personified as God's creative principle. Philo uses the term Logos throughout his treatises on Hebrew scripture in a manner clearly influenced by the Stoics. Topic: <laughs> Church Fathers. The Church Fathers were the leaders of the early Christian Church during its first five centuries of existence, roughly contemporaneous to Stoicism under the Roman Empire. The works of dozens of writers in hundreds of pages have survived. All of them had something to say about the Christian form of the Logos. The Catholic Church found it necessary to distinguish between the Christian Logos and that of Heraclitus as part of its ideological distancing from paganism. The necessity to convert by defeating paganism was of paramount importance. Hippolytus of Rome therefore identifies Heraclitus along with the other pre-Socratics and academics as sources of heresy. Church use of the methods and conclusions of ancient philosophy as such was as yet far in the future, even though many were converted philosophers. In refutation of all heresies Hippolytus says what the blasphemous folly is of Netus, and that he devoted himself to the tenets of Heraclitus the Obscure, not to those of Christ." Hippolytus then goes on to present the inscrutable DKB 67, "...God Theos is day and night, winter and summer but he takes various shapes, just as fire, when it is mingled with spices, is named according to the savour of each." The fragment seems to support pantheism if taken literally. German physicist and philosopher Max Bernard Weinstein classed these views with pandeism. Hippolytus condemns the obscurity of it. He cannot accuse Heraclitus of being a heretic, so he says instead, Did not Heraclitus the obscure anticipate Netus in framing a system? The apparent pantheist deity of Heraclitus if that is what DKB 67 means must be equal to the union of opposites and therefore must be corporeal and incorporeal, divine and not divine, dead and alive, etc., and the Trinity can only be reached by some sort of illusory shape shifting. The Christian apologist Justin Martyr, however, took a much more positive view of him. In his first apology, he said both Socrates and Heraclitus were Christians before Christ, those who lived reasonably are Christians, even though they have been thought atheists, as, among the Greeks, Socrates and Heraclitus, and men like them. See also The following articles on other topics contain non-trivial information that relates to Heraclitus in some way. Topic notes. Topic further reading. Topic editions and translations. Botten, Mick, 2012. Heracleitos, Logos Made Manifest, Upfront Publishing. ISBN 978-1-78035-064-6 All fragments, in Greek and English, with commentary and appendices Davenport, Guy Translator 1979. Heracleitos and Diogenes. Bellinas, Gray Fox Press. ISBN 978-0-9125163636-3. Complete fragments of Heraclitus in English Heraclitus, Haxton Translator, Brooks, Hillman Forward, James 2001. Fragments, The Collected Wisdom of Heraclitus. 
New York, Viking The Penguin Group, Penguin Putnam, Inc. ISBN 978-0-670-89195-5. Parallel Greek and English Khan, Charles H. 1979. The Art and Thought of Heraclitus. An edition of the fragments with translation and commentary. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-21883-2. Kirk, G. S. Heraclitus, The Cosmic Fragments. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Markovich, Miroslav Heraclitus. Greek text with a short commentary. Sankt Augustine, Academia Verlag. ISBN 978-3-89665-171-6. First edition, Heraclitus, Editio Maior. Merida, Venezuela, 1967 Patrick, GTW Heraclitus of Ephesus, The Fragments. Robinson, T. M. 1987. Heraclitus, Fragments, a text and translation with a commentary. Toronto, University of Toronto Press. ISBN 978-0-8020-6913-9. Salas, John, Maley, Kenneth, eds. 1980. Heraclitian Fragments. University, University of Alabama Press. ISBN 978-0-8173-0027-2. Wright, M. R. The Presocratics, The Main Fragments in Greek with Introduction, Commentary and Appendix Containing Text and Translation of Aristotle on the Presocratics. Bristol, Bristol Classical Press. ISBN 978-0-86292-079-1. Topic Selected Bibliography Bacalis, Nikolaos 2005. Handbook of Greek Philosophy, From Thales to the Stoics, Analysis and Fragments. Trafford Publishing. pp. 26-45 under Heraclitus. ISBN 978-1-4120-4843-9. Barnes, Jonathan 1982. The Presocratic Philosophers Revised Edition. London and New York, Routledge Taylor and Francis Group. ISBN 978-0-415-05079-1. Burnett, John 2003. Early Greek Philosophy. Kessinger Publishing. ISBN 978-0-7661-2826-2. First published in 1892, this book has had dozens of editions and has been used as a textbook for decades. The first edition is downloadable from Google Bookstreets. Karl Martin, 2004, Metamorphosen des Geistes. Phrase Geistesselben, Stuttgart, 2004, Band 1, Prometheus der Vordenker, vom Gottlichen zum Menschlichen Wissen. Band 2, Platon und Aristoteles. Das Erwachen des Europaschen Denkens. Band 3, Heraklit von Ephesus und die Entwicklung der Individualität. Phrase Geistesselben, Stuttgart, 2004, ISBN 3 7725 1300 X Dilcher, Roman. 1995. Studies in Heraclitus. Hildesheim, Olms. ISBN 978 3 487 09986 6. Fairbanks, Arthur. 1898. The First Philosophers of Greece. New York, Scribner. Graham, D. W. 2002. Heraclitus and Parmenides. In Caston, V. Graham, D. W. Presocratic Philosophy, Essays in Honor of Alexander Morelitos. Aldershot, Ashgate. pp. 27-44. ISBN 978-0-7546-0502-7. Graham, D. W. 2008. Heraclitus, Flux, Order, and Knowledge. In Kurd, P. Graham, D. W. The Oxford Handbook of Presocratic Philosophy. New York, Oxford University Press. pp. 169-188. ISBN 978-0-19-514687-5. Guthrie, W. K. C. A History of Greek Philosophy, The Earlier Presocratics and the Pythagoreans, 1. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Heidegger, Martin, Fink, Eugen, Seibert Translator, Charles H. 1993. Heraclitus Seminar. Evanston, Northwestern University Press. 
ISBN 978-0-8101-1067-0. Transcript of seminar in which two German philosophers analyze and discuss Heraclitus texts. Kirk, G. S., Raven, J. E. 1957. The Pre-Socratic Philosophers, A Critical History with a Selection of Texts 2nd ed. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Levine, T. Z. 1984. From Socrates to Sartre, The Philosophic Quest. New York, Bantam Doubleday Dell Publishing Group, Inc. Bantam Books. Chapter 2, Shadow and Substance, Section, Plato's Sources, The Pre-Socratic Philosophers, Heraclitus and Parmenides. ISBN 978-0-553-25161-6. Laetius, Diogenes Others, Heraclitus. Lives of the Eminent Philosophers, 2–9. Translated by Hicks, Robert Drew two-volume ed. Loeb Classical Library. Luchter, James Early Greek Thought, Before the Dawn. London, Bloomsbury Publishing. ISBN 978-0567353313. Magnus, Magus, Fuchs, Wolfgang Introduction 2010. Heraclitian Pride. Towson, Furniture Press Books. ISBN 978-0-9826299-2-5. Creative Recreation of Heraclitus Lost Book, from the Fragments Makiran, R.D. 2011. Philosophy Before Socrates, An Introduction with Text and Commentary. Indianapolis, Hackett. ISBN 978-1-60384-183-2. Morelitos, Alexander, ed. 1993. The Pre-Socratics, a collection of critical essays Rev. Ed. Princeton, N.J., Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-02088-4. Nadaf, Gerard The Greek Concept of Nature. Sunny Press. ISBN 978-0791463734. Pyle, C. M. Democritus and Heracleitus, an excursus on the cover of this book, Milan and Lombardi in the Renaissance. Essays in Cultural History. Rome, La Fenice, Istituto di Filologia Moderna, Università di Parma, Testi e Studi, Nuova Serie, Studi 1, Fortuna of the Laughing and Weeping Philosophers Topos, Rodzovich, A. 2011. Heraclitus Historicus Politicus. Studia Antich i Mediwistich, 44 5 ISSN 0039-3231. Schofield, Malcolm, Nussbaum, Martha Craven, eds. 1982. Language and Logos, Studies in Ancient Greek Philosophy presented to G.E.L. Owen. Cambridge, Cambridge UP. ISBN 978-0-521-23640-9. Taylor, C.C.W. ed. Routledge History of Philosophy, From the Beginning to Plato, Vol. I, pp. 80-117. ISBN 0-203-02721-3 Master eBook ISBN, ISBN 0-203-05752-X Adobe Erida Format and ISBN 0-415-06272-1 Print Edition. Taran, L. 337-378. Elenchos, 20-9-52. Vlastos, G. 1955. On Heraclitus. American Journal of Philology. 76, 4, 337 to 378. DOI 10.2307/292270. JSTOR 292270. Wheelwright, Philip. 1959. Heraclitus. Princeton, NJ, Princeton University Press. Wieserhofer, Joseph 2003. Heracleitus of Ephesus. Encyclopedia Iranica, Vol. 12, FASC, 2. pp. 201–202. External links Quotations related to Heraclitus at Wikiquote Works related to fragments of Heraclitus at Wikisource 
media related to Heraclitus at Wikimedia Commons Elpina – Heraclitus, the word is common. The Greek word, three millennia of Greek literature. Elpina – Retrieved 10 October 2007. Heraclitus bilingual anthology from DK in Greek and English, side by side, the translations being provided by the organization, Elpina. Graham, Daniel W. 2006. Heraclitus. The Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy. The Editors. Retrieved 9 October 2007. Graham, Daniel W. 2011. Heraclitus. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. The Editors. Retrieved 25 August 2013. Harris, William, Translator 1994. Heraclitus, The Complete Fragments, Translation and Commentary and the Greek Text. PDF. Humanities and the Liberal Arts, Greek Language and Literature, Text and Commentary. Middlebury College. Archived from the original PDF on 27 September 2007. Retrieved 9 October 2007. Greek and English with DK numbers and commentary. Heraclitus the Obscure, the father of the doctrine of flux and the unity of opposites. Archimedes Laboratory. Retrieved 9 November 2007. Text and selected aphorisms in Greek, English, Italian and French. Hooker, Richard Heraclitus. World Civilizations, an Internet Classroom and Anthology, Greek Philosophy. Washington State University. Retrieved the 11th of October 2007. Selected fragments translated by Hooker. Hoyt, Randy. 2002. The Fragments of Heraclitus. Retrieved the 9th of October 2007. The fragments also cited in DK in Greek, Unicode, with the English translations of John Burnett. See bibliography. June, Daniel. 2012. The Logos, a modern adapted translation of the complete fragments of Heraclitus. PDF. Archived from the original PDF on 2 December 2013. Retrieved 21 April 2015. Neerum, Thomas. 2007. Heraclitus, Ephesus, around 500 BC. Thebigview.com. Essay on the Flux and Fire Philosophy of Heraclitus. Lancero, M. Daniel, Barrow, M. Samuel 2007. Heraclitus. Philoctetes? Philoctetes. Retrieved 10 October 2007. Site with links to PEFs containing the fragments of DK in Greek Unicode with the English translations of John Burnett see bibliography and translations into French, either in parallel columns or interlinear, with links on the lexical items to Perseus dictionaries. Includes also Heraclitus article from Encyclopedia Britannica 11th edition. Magnus, Magus. The Turning. Mailman, Joshua 2009. An imagined drama of competitive opposition in Carter's Scrivo in Vento with notes on narrative, symmetry, quantitative flux, and Heraclitus. Music Analysis, v.28 2-3. 28 2 3, 373 to 423. DOI 10.1111, J.1468 to 2249.2011.00295, X. Starmatellos, Yanis. Heraclitus of Ephesus, Life and Work. Retrieved 12 October 2007. Tricks. Heraclitus Epistemological Views. Sim POSIA, Sigma U Imposia, the online philosophy journal. Archived from the original on 29 September 2007. Retrieved 10 October 2007. Osho. Osho Discourse on Heraclitus, the Hidden Harmony. Heraclitus Series. Heraclitus fragments rendered into the language of deductive logic on Triple Canopy online magazine.